Hi, I'm Linda Mao, and welcome to Art This Week Bio's Conduit Gallery. This is episode six in the series of interviews we did on the history of Nancy Whitenack and Conduit Gallery. In this sixth episode, we speak with Assistant Director Danette Dufalo about her history with Conduit and Nancy. Danette has worked at Conduit since the move from the Main Street space, and she currently curates the gallery's project space. Now for our interview with Danette. What's your relationship with Nancy and how did you two meet? I work for Nancy. We, uh, we met, I was working as a waitress in a cocktail bar. Just kidding. I was a student at UNT studying art and had actually, I was working part-time for an artist, uh, Stuart Kraft, who's a sculptor here in Dallas. And through him, I had uh, the opportunity to, to interview with Edith Baker uh, who had a gallery, Edith Baker Gallery at the time, and who needed an assistant. So I had an interview with Edith. Uh, I wanted to really uh, become more involved in the art scene in Dallas and didn't get the job. And at the time, uh, I was told it was because I didn't, I just, I, you know, I didn't know anybody here. And uh, she said she really liked me. And and you know, this and that and this and that, which I thought at the time was like a really sweet way of, of brushing me off. But in any case, she found somebody more qualified. Uh, and so I went about my business as a student and an artist assistant. And about a month later, I got a call from Nancy Whitenack. Uh, and she said, Danette, this is Nancy Whitenack. Uh, I, you know, I got your number from Edith Baker, who said that, you know, we should meet. So what had happened is uh, Nancy was looking for an assistant at Conduit and uh, had called Edith for a recommendation. And uh, it turns out that Edith really did. <laughs> Wasn't brushing me off uh, and gave my number to Nancy. I interviewed with Nancy and ended up uh, getting, getting that job. Here it is 14 years later <clears throat> and I'm still working with Nancy. So in the 14 years, can you pick out um, a couple kind of favorite exhibitions and memories of working with Nancy at Conduit? It has been really wonderful. It's a dream job in a lot of ways. Uh, it spills over into my personal life and all the people that I've met have been uh, outstanding. And of experiences, I would say one of the most memorable would be actually moving, physically moving the gallery from uh, the Main Street address uh, where I started working with her in 2000 to the Highline address uh, in 2002. Over the course of a weekend, uh, Nancy, I, and a curator we were working with at the time, Paul Meyer, moved every single painting uh, from one gallery to the other. and. Uh, just set up shop and, and had the opportunity to build that Highline uh, gallery in a way that kind of worked for each of us. And because there was so much space, uh, I had an exponential amount of room from what I had had at the Main Street space where she and I kind of shared very small uh, working quarters. And on Highline, I really you know, had the chance to kind of build it for myself, and, and that's, that was really special. Uh, and then there was also just like the physical moving of all of the paintings, which I, I have always thought about and laughed at in my head and chuckled because it was, <laughs> it was kind of, it was an ordeal, a good one though. How did Nancy kind of allow um, the artists, as you see throughout the 14 years of programming, um, to kind of mold and create their work within a space that wasn't necessarily confi confined by four walls uh, to hang pieces on or to present. Or to be commercial. Yeah. Necessarily. I think, I think uh, Nancy's always been really bold and brave to give the artists that she works with free range to do things that may not necessarily be commercial. and allow people to come in and use the space in very non-commercial ways and and I think it speaks to her dynamism as uh, as a gallerist that she knows that that program that kind of programming is necessary so for example maybe two years for two years we hosted the Dallas Video Festival and screened uh, video art 
you know, for free, you know, for anybody to come in and see for seated screenings and then also for installations of videos that had been programmed by the Dallas Video Festival that dealt, you know, that were made by contemporary artists that didn't even have price, prices. We, you know, it wasn't about selling work. It was about uh, supporting the Dallas Video Festival and also showcasing the fact that, you know, video art had been alive in Dallas, you know, from before people had thought it was. Uh, she also, I think the year, I don't know the year, uh, she also gave the space to uh, Noah Symbolist, who's a, a Dallas curator and artist, to mount a really wonderful kind of academic installation that was about artist collectives. And there were several large uh, installations of artist collectives from around the country, again, with work that was not ever intended for sale, uh, but worthy of being shown and, and being shown here in Dallas. Kind of coming from the annex uh, it, at the Main Street location, um, how did you start curating uh, the project room later on down the road? When we were at the gallery on Main Street, there was one exhibition space and then the annex. So we were showing two shows simultaneously. When we moved to the Highline address, we had the opportunity to have two uh, kind of main shows and then had this extra space that was going to continue on what the annex had started. So we, from two shows to three shows, it was pretty fairly quickly uh, apparent that Nancy was spreading a little thin in uh, organizing the artists and, and doing the programming. So I <laughs> came to her, uh, I think like tried to be nonchalant about it in hopes that maybe if it didn't seem like a big deal, she would hand over the reins, but I was surprised that she was actually, she had full faith and confidence uh, that, that I could take over curating what started out as the annex on Main Street became the project room uh, in the new gallery on Highline. She had full faith and confidence that I could take that on, or maybe she was just desperate, uh, but she said, sure, take it, <laughs> that would be great. So maybe, I guess, kind of circling back to the time in which you started working with Nancy to then taking on the project room to now, um, is there maybe like kind of one or two things that you can speak to that uh, you can attribute uh, to Nancy, things that you've learned, um, you know, something that's really kind of stuck out in your personal career um, mm -hmm. that, you know, you really Did I take with give me? her credit for? Completely. She, she has an excellent eye for art and She'll point to something, we'll be at an art fair, we'll be somewhere at a show, and she just knows that she has gut reactions and they're very real, and they're not necessarily about what she thinks a larger audience will think of the work, it's what she responds to. And I've gotten to see the process of her discovery of an artist or an artwork, and then the presentation of it at Conduit, and then other people's response to that, which uh, you know, some people may like it, some people may not, but uh, she's just got this really, this kind of preternatural sense of, of work that's kind of charged, that has some kind of an excitement, you know, if it's, even if it's very quiet, even if it's all uh, monochromatic, that it, it's got something that can pull something out of people. I think she's got an excellent eye. So uh, what were your thoughts on uh when Nancy decided to take, uh, pick up Conduit and take it from Deep Ellum, you know, where she kind of, uh, where she originated into this new kind of unknown space, uh, the design district. I think it speaks to her business acumen that she sensed it was time to move uh, out of Deep Ellum, at least the part of Deep Ellum that she was in, which I think it's always been vibrant uh, Barry Whistler, Public Trust, Kirk Hopper, but even if we were still there, we would still be a few blocks away from them and on the second floor uh, of, a, of a building. So 9-11 had happened. Uh, things were pretty bleak all around, and I trusted that she knew that some kind of a shakeup or some kind of a change with what she was doing was going to be what was needed to shake us out of that or shake, you know, not, yeah, shake, you know, shake something into being. 
as far as moving into the design district, she drove me over to the space and it, it was an empty warehouse and I didn't care. I was sick of getting the parking tickets of <laughs> parking in Deep Ellum and I was like overstaying meters and I was always into the city of Dallas for several hundred dollars um, from parking down there. So I was excited about kind of the Wild West. I mean, the design district at the time was a part of Dallas that nobody really went to or knew about. Uh, so it felt like there was a lot of possibility. I think that's maybe why we took so many chances and did so many kinds of interesting programming er early on, especially that involved, you know, the parking lot and the lawn, you know, behind the gallery and uh, really use that space in a lot of different ways because we were proud of it and because we knew we could because nobody was paying attention. We want to thank Danette for speaking with us. You can find more information on the gallery at conduitgallery.com. Look for a link below in the show notes for the full interview and be sure to watch our other episodes about Conduit Gallery. That's it for Art This Week bios. Thanks for watching. I still got your polar